Hi, after you install WSL on your Windows 10, in many cases you probably want to run different executable files that you have on your Windows 10 from the Linux system that you installed on your Windows 10. But this is not very straightforward, especially if you are a beginner. In this video, I will show you how to achieve this. Okay, so here I have a terminal open. Let me I zoom in. Okay, now if I type notepad.exe and if I execute this we see that notepad.exe it runs and we can open notepad with it however if i type firefox.exe i have firefox installed on this computer if i run this we see that it says command not found now the question is for different executable files how can we just type their name and then we can operate them from this terminal now the first thing that you might think is that okay let us uh, move to the directory where Firefox is installed and then run firefox.exe. So let me I do this. So here is the directory of Firefox. I just put it here. So I'm going to move to that directory. MNTC program. Because the name of program file has a space in it, so you have to put a backslash a space file. So this one means program files for them. Same thing for Mozilla. Enter. So now in this case, we are already in the directory where Firefox is installed. Even now, if I type firefox.exe, we see that still we get command not found. On the contrary, if you have a command prompt of Windows, so in this case, for example, if I if I go to the directory of Firefox, okay, maybe if I type Firefox here directly, it does not recognize that command. But if I go to the directory where Firefox is installed, um, so it's program files and Mozilla Firefox. So if I change already to this directory and then I type firefox.exe, it runs. On the command prompt, it runs. Then we go to that directory, but on this Linux terminal, it does not run. Now the question is, how can we do this? Let me go back to the home. All right, one way to run uh, any executable files is to give the full path of that executable files. So let me zoom in. So for example, here I give the full path. I do not go to the directory where Firefox is installed, but instead I give the full path of the um, to that Firefox.exe. So program files Mozilla Firefox, and directly I type Firefox.exe. So this uh, part is the is the path and here at the end we have the the exe file now if i run this we see that we can actually run firefox now the problem is we don't want every time to type all of these address um this is not what we want we want to just type firefox.exe or any other file okay so basically what we have to do is to add this address to a path variable which stores all the addresses that uh, system will look when it wants to run an executable file. So for example, when we first type notepad.exe, the reason that notepad.exe was operated because the address of notepad is already stored in that list. So what we have to do is to add the address of any other executable files that we want into that list. So how can we see the list? So we have to use the command echo path. If you run this, it gives you a number of directories, basically. So all of these directories are already stored in this path variable. So whenever you type any executable files, the system will look through all of those directories. If it can find those executable files, it will run it. If it cannot find, it says command not found. Here, for example, we notice that we already have C Windows System 32. This is where notepad.exe is stored. So the reason that we can run it because we already have that address in this list, as I mentioned before. Okay, so now how can we add 
the directory of Firefox into this list. So there are different ways that we can do that. First one is to use the command export. Export type path is equal to. So here you type the address mnt c program file. So now notice that when you type the address, you don't want to type it backslash. So here you want to type it the normal way, the way that we even entered for the command prompt. So program files Mozilla Firefox and then path. You enter and now if we do echo again, we see that this address is already added to the list. So now if I type firefox.exe, it directly opens Firefox. Now there is a little bit of problem here. If I close this terminal, this session basically, and I run a new session, here if I type firefox.exe, still it says command not found. The reason was that we only temporarily added that address to that list, only for that session. If I now type echo command, we see that the address that we have added is not anymore here. So how can we add the address permanently into this list? There are different ways. I will show you two methods. First one is to modify the bash RC file. We can open the bash RC file with a text editor, for example, nano bash RC, and then you click enter. So you enter to this page, and so you press page down a few times to get to the end of this file. And at the end of the file, you use the down arrow key to bring the cursor down. Okay, so the pointer now is here. I just add a comment here. Add the new directory here. Okay, we use the same command that we used uh, before, export. Export path is equal to, so now here we type the address. Program files, Mozilla Firefox, path. And now you want to save this. So you, you click on Control X, so it wants to exit. Do so you want to, to save the modification? Click Y and then Enter. Okay, so basically now we have permanently added that directory into this list. But we have to close this session and open a new session to see the... Okay, so now if I type echo again, we see that the directory where Mozilla is installed is permanently to that list. So now here, if I type firefox.exe, it operates the Firefox. It doesn't matter even if I close that terminal and open a new one and I type firefox.exe, it operates it. We have permanently added that to the, to the list. Of course, this is only valid for this user account. So probably if you are from another user account on this system, you will not be able to do this. Okay, so now let me I delete this, uh, this command from bash rc file. I want to show you the second method. So I'm going to comment it. So I commented, exit, modification, yes. And now if I open a new terminal, if I do echo, we see that the path is not anymore here. And obviously, if I type firefox.exe, it again does not run. Okay, so now the second way to, to modify this list such that you can directly run any executable files uh, is to change the system environment variables on your windows. Okay, so we have to search for system environment variable and we should run it with our admin account. So after you run it, basically you come to this window and here you click on advanced environment variables. Now the top part is user variables and the lower part is system variables. So on the system variables, you scroll down to find the variable named path. Now in this case, path has the address of uh, Windows 32 for my case. 
Now, if you want to add a new directory to this, you put a semicolon after this and paste the directory that you want. So, for example, in this case, I want to add the directory where Firefox is installed. So I paste it here and click OK. If the path variable does not exist, for example, you have deleted it by mistake or something, then you can just add a new variable. So you type path here and you put the directories there. In this case, I have it, so I don't do it. All right, so now basically we have added that directory. You click OK. Click OK. Now in the I close this terminal and open a new terminal to to have the effect. All right. So now if I type echo, what we see is that the directory where Firefox is installed is already added to this list, which means if now I type firefox.exe, it will run directly. So in this second way, we basically modify the system environment variables, and from there, we already see the impact on this um, Linux system. I think the second method is much easier because you can directly copy these addresses and paste it into that path variable list. All right, so that's all for this video. Hope to see you next time. Bye.